is that you know we've got stored energy here and that is gravitational potential store and that when it falls it's going to be converted into kinetic energy it's going to be transferred as kinetic energy that kinetic energy is going to turn some turbines which turn a generator and produce the electricity so that sound was absolutely awful so i've come to scotland to show you a different hydroelectric dam <laughs> So the first thing you might want to know about a hydroelectric dam is it's a renewable source of energy. Okay, there is always going to be a water cycle and so that um, qualifies as renewable because a renewable energy source is one that comes back as quickly as we can use it. But it needs managed. Uh, you can see the reservoir is quite low just at the minute. Okay, so it's not an unlimited source of energy that this is a renewable energy resource. It means every year this reservoir is going to get filled. That's not to say that that doesn't need managed. And you can see it's quite high in the summer at the minute and it is not at its full level. So your first and your simplest point to understand about hydroelectric power is it's this conversion between potential energy into kinetic energy and that is a crucial conversion to understand. What is, is that potential energy all about? Well, it's water that's higher up in a gravitational field, okay, and we can call that a gravitational store of energy. Uh, than it is down there, down the valley. So when the water is allowed to rush through the pipes, okay, it's doing mechanical working and that energy is becoming kinetic energy, we could say. It's the same energy, but it's movement energy is kinetic. That kinetic energy, that rushing water, is doing mechanical work on a turbine, okay? So it is spinning a turbine, which is a giant fan, essentially. And that turbine is doing mechanical work on a generator, which is a coil of wire spinning relative to a magnet. So it's a coil of wire in a magnetic field. It causes the electrons to start moving in that wire, and that's a form of electrical working, therefore. So that generator is connected to the national grid via some transformers, which we've got other videos on. Those turbine generators are actually a little way down the valley. They're actually about half a mile down the valley. So I've said that it's a renewable form of energy and that it will come back as quickly as it, we can use it. So there are some real good positives about hydroelectricity. It's of course renewable. It is does not contribute to the greenhouse effect, so it doesn't give out any um, greenhouse gases. There are no greenhouse gases at point of view. So currently, if it's working, there are no greenhouse gases being uh, released at this time. They have a pretty short startup time. Because of the short startup time, they can cope with demand. Now, this isn't an example of a pump storage whereby you pump water uphill at night to store some of the energy when there is a low demand. But hydroelectric power stations and other forms of renewable can be switched on in short amounts of time to cope with increasing demand during the day. Okay, but there are some negatives as well. It does have a huge impact on the environment as in it will have destroyed the habitat. But however, alpine habitats are not the most diverse, so we do need to weigh them as well. And you, you're using a whole lot of land, which otherwise would be a natural habitat. Um, so you have to think about that land use there. They're also, they're quite expensive to build and maintain. Okay, so they, they, those are some kind of negative sides. And importantly, I think the environmental one, consideration of habitats and this permanent change to the landscape, that, that needs to be weighed up. It has a geographical impact. We've permanently changed this landscape. It has an impact in terms of tourism as well. And actually, this is a tourist attraction, but it is as much of a tourist attraction as it might have been were there not a huge reservoir behind me. In the UK, we mainly have non-renewables like coal and nuclear providing this constant backbone because those power stations take a long time to start up. So they are running all the time and they're providing a constant amount of energy, the, the amount of electricity that we never kind of go below. Um, and then at different times of day, we have these shorter startup power stations that can come on to cope with that increasing demand. That's all you're probably going to need for your exams, but I just want to tell you a little story about Scottish Hydro because it was a, a crucial part of our war effort during World War II. Um, in, um, what you need for building planes, especially the Spitfire, was aluminium. And aluminium can only be got from its ore by electrolysis, that's a bit of chemistry for you. So you need electrical energy to basically get hold of aluminium. 
And of course, how do we mainly produce our electricity? It was coal and oil back then as well. And those things were in short supply because of the, the war machine and because of um, tankers being uh, downed in the Atlantic, etc. So it's really important that we could get a readily available source of electricity and Scottish Hydro was the solution to that. So most of the aluminium for those Spitfires was actually made up here in Scotland because there was the readily available hydroelectrical power for, for that. So it's a really important part of our history. With the, this point of fact that you can't have hydroelectricity anywhere, you need these mountainous areas. We're really lucky that we had Scottish Hydro available at that time and also it was far enough and out of reach of Germany's bomb as I must think so. Someday you're gonna need me mama Well when I really won't need you Cause when I try to love you right baby Seems like my loving wouldn't 